Hey, welcome to another video. This is Kai, and uh, today we'll be doing a homework assignment for CS106A. Uh, this assignment is particularly a larger assignment. Um, it's assignment three, also known as breakout. And what I'll be doing for this video is um, breaking it up into its parts based on uh, what they want you to do. And so, uh, just to get a basic understanding of the program, uh, you pretty much create a world where you have a layer of bricks, and with these different colored bricks, you use the paddle to um, deflect a ball. And the ball, the purpose of the ball is to, or the purpose of the game is to break all the bricks. And so, let's get down to it. So you first start off by opening the file for breakout, and this is just going to be one class file. Okay, and as you can see here, we start off with our packages. We've got the graphics, the program, util. Now, um, we haven't seen util before, but I'll explain what that is for later. And then we have our applet, so we can run our program. And we also have the uh, action events. So if we have certain, let's say, mouse clicks or keyboard clicks, we can uh, listen to that and be able to take action if we want to. So, um, let's see here. We have our own application width, height. Those are the dimensions. We got the width, height renamed, and I'll explain why they did that. Uh, we got the panel dimensions. We got the offset from the bottom of the screen, so we know that. Uh, M bricks per row is 10, and bricks is 10. So that means that there are 10 bricks per row, and there are 10 rows. Each brick is separated by four. There's a brick width. Those are the dimensions, ball dimensions. Uh, brick from the top and number of turns to play. Okay, let's get started. So the first uh, part of the video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to set up the bricks. Okay, so just like in my previous videos that I've uh, um, created, uh, I pretty much showed uh, the viewers how to create a pyramid. The idea here is pretty much the same uh, thing or very similar. And so what we're going to do in order to make this program more organized is by creating a, a series of methods, okay? And the first method I'm going to create is called setUpGame. Why? Because we're going to break this uh, whole thing down into two parts called setUpGame and PlayGame in order to create some organization there, okay? Now remember from what I said before, uh, once you create those methods, you want to go ahead and create the stubs for each of those methods, okay? Uh, as practice, right, to kind of get in the habit of doing. Um, I forgot to put the void there. Okay, so, um, play game. I mislabeled that one. That one's just supposed to be game. Okay, so to set up the game, uh, it says here that we want to build the bricks. So the first thing that you want to do when you set up the game is build bricks. Okay, and so I will create a step for that as well. Private void build bricks. Okay, all right, cool. So now that we've created the step for it, let's go ahead and fill in the code. Um, the idea is when you want to make this uh, method or construct this algorithm, we would, sh or we should, start off with the rows. So int row row is less than the number of rows there are, and that's a constant. So if you look up, that would be this one, and brick rows. You can just double click on it, and basically it would uh, copy that text, and you can control C it, and copy and paste it into this place you need it. Uh, again, you can actually have a window that would pop up on the right, but just for uh, screencasting purposes, I've uh, minimized that. so. Um, that won't be open, but uh, if you have that outline open, you can actually copy the variables that you want to use and then paste it. it. Might be a little easier than trying to scroll back and finding your variables. So let me just finish this up. Okay, so we just created the loop that would create our rows, and now I'm going to create the loop that would create our columns in our rows. Um, and how many columns do we have? Well, how many bricks are there? There's 10. So we're going to use n bricks per row because there's a total of 10 bricks per row. And again, uh, why we want to create those final uh, variables is because 
we can modify it from the variables if we want to make some changes to the program. So if we didn't want 10 bricks, but we wanted 12, we can easily just modify that one variable and voila, you get that change automatically. Okay, so there we go. We've created the, um, the loop that would create the rows, create the loop that would create the bricks uh, in the rows, and now we need to create the bricks. So to create the brick, we need to construct it, and the construction for this one is a gerect. We'll call this gerect a brick, and you have new gerect. And then you'll need your uh, your dropping uh, coordinates. So where are you going to drop the brick? And because we always build a brick from the top left corner, uh, we have to use the top left coordinate. Okay. Now, this brick pattern actually is offset from the top, so uh, keep that in mind when we start the Y coordinates. But for zero, because uh, it's hugging the wall, we won't have a displacement from the wall. Rather, we're going to start from the wall. And then you have to include any changes every time it drops a brick. So, for example, when it drops the first brick, eh, there's nothing to worry about. But when it wants to drop the second brick, we would have to displace the starting marker by a brick in a space. So the easiest way to do that, do that is by getting the dimensions of the brick. So the brick is, papa, where we go, brick, just said papa. <laughs> All right, so anyways, um, there's the brick and the space. We need the space, and there we go. And what we need to do is um, to displace it by the number of bricks. So uh, when we start, we want this to be zero, so, you know, make it zero, but then after the first turnaround, we want it to be one, so we can displace it by one. On the second turn, uh, we want to, um, I'm sorry, on the third turn, we want to displace by two, and then four, and then five. Well, the easiest way to do that is by using the variable column. The column itself will count all the way up to n bricks per row, so that can be our little guy that will help us count up. Um, okay, so that is our x displacement. Because um, I'm kind of running out of space here, uh, I might hit enter. And you can hit enter and use two lines to make one formula. Uh, I wouldn't count in, in any other way except for one formula. So that can be a nice function. I'll show you how that works. Um, but anyways, for the y coordinate, we are going to establish the offset. So we've got the brick offset from the top, Okay, plus and I hit enter, plus whatever displacement it will have. So for the first time, there wouldn't be any displacement, but for the second time, right, we want it to shift down by a brick plus a space, okay? So again, uh, for each number it counts up by, it will displace it by a row, and if we're on to three, it should displace it by two rows. And if it's four, displace it by three rows. And again, uh, instead of using column in this case, because that would just screw everything up, we want this to follow the count by the rows. Okay. And the last thing that you'll need is the dimensions of the brick. So the dimensions of the brick are brick width and brick height, like so. Okay. So there we go. That's our construction for our brick. Uh, we need to do a couple adjustments to the attributes, which, like for example, um, they're colored and they're filled. So let's go ahead and make each brick and set it up to be filled. So as you can see, just by hitting that period, you get the series of methods that pop up would help you, um, you know, get things done faster. Uh, not necessarily help you memorize it because uh, it's there for you, but I should recommend if you're actually taking class. Uh, CS106A, you should try to really memorize those because the midterm is a closed book, so you need to be careful with that. Um, Brick.setFilled, we'll set that as true. That will fill in the, uh, the the brick. And then we need to colorize it. Now, in order to colorize it, we can use an if-then statement, or if-else statement. Sorry, it's not a then, but rather it's if-else. Um, a little messy wouldn't highly recommend it. Um, the best way to really uh, fix this up nice and pretty is to use a switch. Okay, and I'll show you how that works. Pretty much you, when you use a switch, you need to have some kind of integer inside the conditional statement box. 
I'm going to choose row because you want the colors to change based on the rows. And then the next thing you want to do is hit case. And when the case is that certain number, you're going to have it trigger something. So here, I'm going to have it trigger uh, a color change. So we're going to set the color for the first one to be red, just like that. Okay. And then once you establish it that it's red, um, you want to break out of that switch because if you don't, you're going to be stuck in it. So after you break, you set the color, then you add the brick. So you add that brick. Okay. And that's pretty easy. Now we need to add in the uh, cases for the other rows. So for the second row, it's going to be red. For the third row, it's going to be, what do we have there? Orange? All right, orange, color orange. And then we're going to go ahead and switch that to the third row, case three. I'm sorry, fourth row, but case three in this case, because you start from zero. And then case four will be the other color, which in this case appears to be yellow. Now we're going to go ahead and copy down the yellow. Okay. And boom. And then we're going to go ahead and create the green. So there we go. Case six. We call that green. And then case eight is going to be our blue. But it seems to be a little lighter. I think we'll go with cyan. Cyan. All right, case eight. Um, case nine will be cyan as well. And last but not least, uh, any number that does not fall under these categories will create a default. And if it does do a default, we'll just simply have it break. So it does nothing, okay? All right, so that's how you create the switch. And it modifies each row based off which row it's in, okay? So if it's in the first two, red, second two, uh, orange, third two, yellow, fourth two, green, and the last two rows are cyan. And we have it at a brick. So to check to see if this works, we'll go ahead and hit run. And uh, hit breakout. And there you have it. There you go. That is the application done, just like that. Um,